Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. I don't know why the intro music from when you're about to enter the queue is still playing here in the deck manager. I didn't do it. I didn't do it, guys, but it's there. And it, by the way, it's me. It's CGB. You thought I was going to forget. I didn't. And today in the arena, we are continuing the Covert Go White color challenge in mono white and have i got one for you today this is an artifact based brew it's an aggressive deck but i wanted there just aren't enough lords we lost benelish marshall in standard there aren't a lot of great ways to pump your artifact cre your creatures your mono white creatures but there is some kind of crazy things you can do with evasion so what we have here is a deck built around the artifact synergies of Steel Overseer and All That Glitters. All That Glitters gives an enchanted creature plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control, which means when you throw it on a Ginger Brute, which you can make unblockable, or an artifact creature and you use your Manifold key to make it unblockable, you can smash in for a ton of damage. In order to maximize All That Glitters and Steel Overseer, we get to play a little more interaction than most decks because they have multiple payoffs, like Glass Casket and Conclave Tribunal to keep the opponent's battlefield clear. We also have Gideon because, well, Gideon, we needed another angle of attack. Gideon does that. It gives us a way to exile permanence if it gets enough counters on it. It doesn't get hit by sweepers. And it has a sweet interaction where we can make our Steel Overseer vigilant, attack with it, and then pump everybody. So Gideon made the cut. And we have Venerated Loxodon to grow the absolutely horrific little army of troops. To be honest, we're a little bit creature light, and uh, it would be nice to always draw some one drops, and multiple one drops at that, but we'll see how that goes. I'm a little bit worried about the Loxodon always having Convoke buddies, but anyway, that's gonna, we're gonna see how that plays out in the games. We're gonna go dive into an event, and see how it goes. It's time to dive right in and let the nonsense begin. Okay. I mean, maybe this hand does stuff. I don't know. <laughs> this key looks really weird here. Like, what is? what do you do? You do nothing right now. I make Gideon unblockable, I guess. All right. We'll see what happens. Anything could happen. Our opponent, Watery Grave, Overwhelmed Apprentice. They're coming for my deck, you guys. They're coming for the deck. Well, there were no land on top anyway. I was going to get mana screwed, so thank you. The deck was out to get me. Ta-da. What is going on? I don't know if you guys see it on your side. On my client side, it is lagging. It is not good. It is it is hic it is having little hiccups everywhere. So I don't like having to scry that to the top. If this is a good mill opponent, they saw that. Well, okay. They're just a thought erasing opponent. Looks like some black blue, maybe a Vantress Gargoyle, maybe a Drown in the Lock type deck. They take my Gideon because it's the good card in my hand and everything else is kind of a joke. They keep on top because it's obviously another Thought Erasure. It's what always happens here. All right, we go hard. Steel Overseer. Another Overwhelmed Apprentice. Is that what you kept on top? Kind of weird. I mean, all this scrying, all these opportunities to make good decisions. Will you make them? Maybe we need to cover scrying more in the videos. You don't have to keep things on top. Just because they're spells. Yeah, this is going horribly. <laughs> these blue-black decks... Maybe they're back. Maybe the field banning makes it better, but they've already disrupted my synergy pretty bad, which is going to make the deck look pretty bad. Just the way it's going to have to be, I guess. But yeah, this is not what you expect to play against in the current meta, because it's been kind of a trash pile versus Field of the Dead and versus Fires of Invention. So uh, when you do run into it in an event like this, sometimes it looks pretty silly. It looks really silly. Our opponent keeps keeping these Overwhelmed Apprentices in their scries and such. Unless they just had three in their opener, which isn't likely, but the Arena Shuffler does weird stuff. I just don't... I don't get it. 
I mean, you're not really milling me very quickly. You're just kind of setting up your future draws. Maybe that's enough for you. Anyway, let's try sending a message. My opponent's sitting on Drown in the lock, most likely. It's the card that I would be playing if I were in this spot. I'd like to attack you for two. It's it's not a it's not a huge ask. And what do you got? All right. I'm trying to play at a reasonable pace. My opponent's having absolutely none of it. I don't know what the hell's. I mean, it probably is just them sitting on a drown in the lock and trying to be, like, thoughtful about what to target, but it's like, come on, man. Let's, let's go. I'd rather make 1-1s one now than pump and attack with a 2-3 flyer. Oopsie. Pump fake. Did you flinch? Did I get you? Yeah, that is a blue-black deck for sure. Just sit there doing nothing. Doing absolutely nothing. May I has turn? All right, so this would probably get countered. So let's just keep on cranking out creatures. I know they have Thought Erasure, but whatever. They do nothing, we do nothing. I, what are you doing? Let's make plays. I guess we, we're wearing them down. That's what we're doing. We're mentally exhausting our opponent. <laughs> are you serious right now? All right. The borrower got brazen. Sure. That is just fine. Now, it's an annoying creature that will occupy some of my mana later to deal with, but that's okay. I can handle it. Anytime. Another critter. Another 1-1. One, one. Another bell. Bring forth the lovely lady. Another tribunal, which is probably going to go to this borrower on end step. We could also occupy our opponent's mana here with the Loxodon. But I, I do want to see if they'll counter like a glass casket in a tribunal when I try to take out their borrower. So that might open it up for the Loxodon to do something later. So a little bit of patience. I know. So patient over here, as I complain about my opponent's slow play. So patient. Now start flooding out, please. I need to outnumber you in good spells, and I need to suck your counters out on removal. So, uh, please, just feel free to flood out now. That's fine. It can attack, yeah. It's an attacker. So we'll have to deal. Which means we do have to navigate the Drown and Lock. The opponent knows about these. I could try to block with the Gargoyle. It's not like the Gargoyle's doing much. Yeah. Why not? The opponent might kill it in response, and that gets a Drown in the Lock out of the opponent's hand. Or a Murderous Rider, that works. Perfect. All right. So, one, two, one, two, three, four. I'm just trying to also figure out if this is a good time to resolve my venerated Loxodon. Since I do think that the opponent will have a counter spell as their last play. I can't do it all, right? No, I can't do it all. I could leave one of these two, and then I have two removal spells to interact with it, but I don't have a way to block it. I could try to race it. <laughs> You're really funny. You are so funny. All right. Let's go ahead and get this gone. And let's play you and tap you and you. Pump the squad. And yeah, why not? Now we'll see what the opponent's got. With two Conclave Tribunals left, I'm confident I can answer the Bowerower before it kills me. Narset. Sure. Yeah, that's a card. That is a card. 
Oh, well, our opponent's getting their act together. Maybe getting slow rolled woke them up to their own behavior. Another casket is nice. Well, our opponent knows about the tribunal, so they'll counter that. But no, I think we lead with the casket. Stuff them in a box. And there it is. Now we can try attacking here. I don't think that sending this really has a point, but the opponent would have to block it with three creatures in order to kill it, so may as well. Just in case the opponent was planning to use all their blockers on like double, double, single, this still gets a hit on the Narset. Are we just chumping everything? Yeah, okay. So it looks like the question now is going to become, do I want to trade a Conclave Tribunal for one of the top four cards of my opponent's library. I mean, it is a selection and the tribunal only trades for one card at a time anyway. You could use some training. I could also get the borrower gone. But I think we could still win this race. Yeah, let's deny, let's just deny cards. Let's deny spells. I must train harder. <laughs> Murderous Rida, okay. All right, Overwhelmed Apprentice stays home, interesting. Another castle, not bad. Smash. What you got? Damage. All right, we'll make some critters. My proliferate can grow my puppet. I guess that's the size of my skills right now. So this is where the lifelink race is going to get a little bit ugly. Down to eight. Two cards left. Let's make a 1-1. One, one. Next turn we can try to ambush the rider if we wish. This land, I wish to flood upon my opponent and this is what I get, team. This is what I get. All right, eat that. I don't have another trick to gain life. If I try to get rid of this now, I guess things don't get a lot better. Other than trying to constrict my opponent's mana and it's getting to the point where they have too much of it anyway. So we'll do this, hope for the best. And yep, as kind of expected, unfortunately. All right, we still have a few turns to draw something useful and get out of it. Or put enough pressure on the opponent that we can pull this off. Doesn't seem very likely that we can just smash through. We do have the key, that's one, two, three hits, but uh, remember, counterattacking from the rider is always an option for the opponent. I can still sack this to keep my opponent from gaining life, but at this point I don't think it matters. I think we're going to have to draw a removal or a way to just get a ton of damage through. Okay. Liliana. That's a problem. Wow, the flood. Ugh. That ended poorly. That was a lot of lands in a row down the stretch. That hurts. Oh, 
All right. Let's see how this hand does. Gargoyle him up. What is going on with what people are playing today? <laughs> bacon. There's bacon in the house. All right. Well, we'll move right in. Because why go soft? Gotta go hard. Whatever the opponent's up to, I'm probably not going to enjoy it. And that definitely goes for Teferi Time Raveler. Sorry, I'm late. Here we go. Yeah, uh, so what we've been playing today has lined up terribly against our first two opponents. Absolutely terribly. Matchups in Magic. It's a problem. We'll see what Gideon can do. It's probably not much against Jeskai Fires, but... I don't know. What are their good answers to this? Just play a million Planeswalkers, probably. Uh-huh. Sahili. That'll be fun. So, Teferi's on two, huh? All right, you definitely go. You I'll take a chunk out of. No more game. Not Still have much to learn. We can put out the key and we can put out the gargoyle, I guess. I don't see a lot of reason not to. And your turn. Key's looking pretty janky right now. Unless the opponent makes blockers, then Key looks really good. Okay, well, the opponent will have to deal with his Gideon. What are you gonna do? Land. Sahili. I'm prepared. All right. Something instant speed, probably. This can be made unblockable. Um, vigilance doesn't really matter, I don't think, unless we thought we'd sacrifice it for to gain life, which doesn't stand out as a thing for me. So yeah, we'll keep giving it lifelink just because maybe the life will matter someday. Share my light. And we will declare our attackers. The opponent will probably make a servo at instant speed. And when they do, we'll give Gideon unblockability and Ginger Brood unblockability, and that'll be that. Justice Strike. That's obnoxious. I guess I still do have to do this. It's gonna take a long time to battle through all these Planeswalkers. I hope you're up to it, Gideon. This might be a bad idea. Never mind. I guess we lose. We begin. I will call the dragon. Bye bye, Gideon. Ugh. No I mean this You didn't miss a beat, did you? Not a single beat. All right, battle on. Gideon returns. Let me lead the charge into darkness. Take out the Sarkin. The opponent will probably play another one. Does not lose. Doesn't really matter. We're just plussing the Gideon after all. So I could have played around that Sarkin play by taking out the Teferi rather than hitting Sahili to one. Yeah. Oops. That's not good. And you dig... Yeah, now this dies. Yeah. Enough. Yep, let's rock and roll. We've got early creatures and a removal. 
So far, it's been a, it's been an adventure. Let's see if we can get this deck going. We're starting in an O2 hole. We got beat up by Demir Control and Jeskai Control. And this deck, well, let's just say Control is not its forte. We'll show them what's up with the Ginger Brutes. Yeah, this mono red deck though, I'm very curious to see what happens. Very curious to see how it goes. Turn two cavalcade, and why not? Feels like a champion. Overseer. Alright. We'll probably get killed, but we'll at least find out. Here's the tribunal. We'll take away the cavalcade of calamity. It's much more. Like, since all their creatures key off the Cavalcade, I really like taking the Cavalcade away. Then Ginger Brute could have hung back on defense. I guess I'm feeling frisky. That's my explanation for that. Here's a Chandra. Well, that means the Overseer is going to do its thing. So that is a sacrificial Chandra. Which means the opponent might have another if they're willing to throw it away so easily. So, we'll just throw this in the box. Murder your Chandra. Hit you for Uno. Send a message. Consider this bridge burned. And yeah, my plan is on the battlefield. Your plan is in your hand. Let's see what happens. Torbs. Yeah, Torbs is annoying. Without question, Torbs is annoying. That's probably really good. Oh my gods. All right, can you kill me? That is the new, that is the question. Can you kill me? I'm at 14, you have a Torbran. You have four cards in your hand. You have one turn to live because all that glitters made my Ginger Brute freaking epic. Did I mention I have a blocker? Yep, there's the other Chandra. Say hi to my fiery I, I applaud this game. My opponent played very fast. I played very fast. The conclusion was quickly reached. And I like the conclusion. No answer for the Overseer from a red deck feels weird, but I'll take it. Weird hand. I guess I have to draw more creatures. Let's put our hope in Elephant Jesus and drawing some more small critters off the top. All right, rub your hands together. Trust the top of the deck. That didn't go well. That was not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Seems like there's a lot more hits in the deck than misses. And yet, and yet, and yet. This card, I mean, it'll have to trade for something eventually. Let's at least make it something I don't care about. Something I have too many of, these reactive spells. I might regret that someday in the future. It does seem a little quick for me to tribunal such a small creature, but we'll see. Puppet, huh? All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, more of those is fine. We're finally getting our stuff together. Take that as well. Next turn, we'll start just dropping elephants. We'll go full Dumbo drop mode. Now we slowed the mono black aristocrats looking opponent down a little bit. Let's see what they have for a follow up. Another enforcer. And a fen. Ooh. Oh. Ugh. Oh, that's gross. Didn't expect that one. It's not in a lot of the aristocrat style decks, although I run it in my own. Yep. Put that land on the bottom. And crank out the monster. Let's go. Yep, now I've got a bunch of one threes and one fours. I'm a champ I'm a true champion. It isn't the greatest. <laughs> I I'll, I'll tell ya. It's not quite what I was hoping for. That's 
That's a problem. That is a good Conclave Tribunal or Glass Casket target. And Order of the Midnight's coming down as a 2-2 that can't block. And no attacks. All right, land off the top. We could be making one ones or we could be slamming him for three. Aggression, be aggressive. Rawr. Start that party. So we're both close to empty handed. I'm guessing my opponent's last card is another meaningless dork. I think we would have seen a removal spell. I think we would have seen another important card, like a Yara. Maybe it's another Order of the Midnight, since they have no graveyard. That would make sense. So, yeah, we don't want to trade. We basically want to avoid trades as much as possible. And try to put pressure on the opponent's life total. Okay. Another Gargoyle. If I send in the Loxodon, my opponent can double block it and draw two cards. It's a really good trade for them. I think I'm going to continue this awkward air raid beatdown. I've had to lean on this Lockwing Gargoyle a lot more than I hoped to. The card, the deck is supposed to be carried by cards like All That Glitters and Steel Overseer and Venerated Loxodon, but we only got the Lox, we had the one Loxodon, not two, which was the whole reason I kept the hand. Ugh. It's not been pretty. Not been pretty so far. Just you, huh? Alright. Two points. For Gryffindor. No, Slytherin. Clearly Slytherin. Habits. Another land. Now another Midnight Reaper. Well, that is painful, but if we can get our opponent's life total low enough to force them into some real awkward times, some real bad blocks, Could get interesting. Of course, we're just chunking away here with a lock flying gargoyle, and it's uh, it's gonna take a minute. It's gonna take some time. Our opponent's still two cards up on us in hand. This is not good. Not good at all. So yeah, we're not. No blocks. Well, we'll save our blocks for some day later. We definitely don't want to give our opponent a flyer that can block. We definitely don't want to give up one of our creatures. All right, another Fen Lurker isn't that scary. Another land. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I've got a plan. It's 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 a really funky race. It's what it is. And we've got the Mover Initiative. We're getting our opponent lower than they're getting us at this time. Is it Fen Lurking time? Not yet. We can just block a Fen Lurker with a Gargoyle. It's not very scary. I guess the opponent could pump it to the moon, but that takes all their mana for the turn. We still have a block with the Puppet eventually where we exile it and make a human. I'm just trying to hold off on that until I absolutely can't hold off anymore. This feels like a really weird bad game of Limited <laughs> that we're playing. Uh, we're, but obviously we're both missing like some of our payoffs. Like Rankle isn't here for our opponent. And there are Yara. There's a casket. Nice. All right, so pump it. We'll use the casket after combat. This part, I'm sure the opponent knows is coming to some extent. Hit. All right. So we could take away a Reaper, but the opponent's so low on life that I'm almost to the point where the Reaper starts to kill them. So I think I just want to take away the Order of the Midnight to take the pressure off my life total. I think that's the thing. I think that's what matters in the game. All I need to do is get another hit in with this gargoyle, and the opponent's so low on life that they can't even trade their creatures anymore. Knight of the Ebon, sure. Not something I have to worry about blocking. And yeah, now the opponent, if they attack too much, we just kill them. Keep it coming. 
This has just been the undoing of a black mage. Just the the slow, gradual undoing of the of a black mage by a lockwing gargoyle in constructed. This is this is gross. <laughs> Your poor black heart. Your poor, poor black heart. Okay. It's on. Those seem pretty easy. Then there's this. This is worth two life. I just need to kill something else. The opponent can pump this so they don't die. So I need to make sure something else dies with my puppets. And my puppets can kill the, the enforcer. So this is one, two, three, four. And then this prevents a lot of damage. This might. Yeah, the opponent has to use pumps to get here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six that they can get through. All right, what you got? But it's lethal. Um, it's lethal if the triggers go on the stack for the Midnight Reaper. And the opponent choosing to go out, as my friend in college would say, like a G. Death by their own Midnight Reaper triggers. Yeah, okay. We've got payoff cards. You forget these are in the deck after a while. <laughs> after a long game where you just don't have them or Teferi just wrecks your all that glitters, you just kind of forget. All right, our opponent took a mole to six. We're on the play. If this planes ever makes it all the way to the battlefield, we start the game. Rugged Highlands, sure. One card late, but it'll still be good. Let's see what happens with our Steel Overseer. Creeping Trailblazer. Elementals? Feels like a long time no see. What is going on? Ah, uh, classic MTG Arena performance these days, I tell ya. Schmork. You want some? You want to trade with a ginger brute? Pretty good trade for me. The opponent might just say, hey, that's evasive. This isn't going to get better. I may as well block it. We'll see. Then right away, we are in the tank. It is a big decision. Uh, from what I know about my deck, they should probably take the trade. But we'll see. Most people never would, which is why I just attack. And why I do it quickly. Like, like I am so happy to make this trade, dude. I hope you make this trade. Okay. Frickin' arena. Frickin' arena, you guys. Is this how I get my third loss? Is this how we exit the event? Three wins. I guess we won that game. Yay! That was anticlimactic. Why do I keep this in the video? I will definitely keep this in the video because Arena is in danger. It's in danger. Performance issues, bugs, disconnects. It's in danger of turning into a pile of designer crap that MTGO turned into around the time of like version three or whatever it was. So, please. Please, for the love of God, if anybody out there, just, uh, we have to keep putting this out there. We have to make it clear that this kind of crap happens and needs to be fixed. And it doesn't happen that often. It's not a big deal. It's just a standard event. But um, you can look on Twitter and see a, a thread about all the crashes and all the stability issues at Mythic Championship 5, or which is a big deal. Uh, the latest one in Long Beach, which is a huge deal. So, uh, yeah, it's not just us. Anyway, please fix the arena. It deserves, it deserves it. It's a really great game. 
Why do we have laggy graphics? Why do we have disconnection issues? Why do I have all this weird crap happening? Fix it. Fix it. It's an awesome game. If if Wizards can do one thing right, it's try to take everything that's great about Magic, make it available on Arena as quickly as possible, and make it work. Please do. Crucial fourth win on the line, and I like my hand. I like my hand as long as I'm up against somebody who plays creatures, not a pile of removal. This makes it if we draw that garbagey stuff like Inquisitive Puppet, Ginger Brute, Lockwing Gargoyle. If we draw those, there are payoffs for them, two of them. So I think we have to keep a hand like this. Island. Okay. What is up? What is going on? Snapping off radical ideas like it were nothing. So I'm going to show you a cool trick. Give your Steel Overseer Vigilance. Move into combat. And then tap it to pump. What? Galaxy Brain. Galaxy Brain moment, everybody. The Murderous Rider is here. The Gideon is dead. No land. This is getting... There's no creatures is what I should say. Land, not cre like we're not drawing any other artifact creatures. It's starting to get weird. It's starting to get weird. I'm getting concerned. My opponent is on some other blue-black, probably removal tribal build. And my deck isn't doing enough. Okay, I guess you have opt. Unsummon. Unsummon could be interesting here. All right, let's throw a casket at him. Got him. Okay. Do we throw in all that glitters just to hit as hard as we can? I think we do. I think we do. I think we just need to get this thing dead. Um, What's the thing I want removed the least, though? Because whatever I put this all that glitters on is gonna... It's gonna be a target. I, could, I guess I'll go with the Overseer. It has the lower power on its own, and it's a, it's a removal magnet as it is. So, let's move in. What do you got? Another radical idea. It's in reanimator. That's what we're up against. Some kind of blue-black reanimator. Good game. And our opponent hits the road. Wow. They just were not prepared for that level of aggression. <laughs> and level up in mastery. Okay, okay, we're rolling. We got to four wins um, from an O2, so let's... House money game. House money game. Rebuild that gold pile. Let's go. Let's go. Um, yeah, artifact Jesus. If you smell what the lox is cooking. I played against more Thought Erasures today than I have in about a month, so kind of curious. Now I, now it's got me rattled again, remembering those Thought Erasure days and looking at my Loxodon like, well, if they erase my Thought Erasure, my hand is trash, and that is true. But I also haven't played against Oko yet today, and if they have Oko, his hand is pretty, like, what are you going to turn into an elk? There isn't much that you can turn into an elk at an advantage. However, they are on the play. If they have Oko on turn two, there's probably no amount of power and toughness in my life that can keep up with that. But let's see what happens. We have a mulligan from the opponent after a lot of thinking. And then a snap keep. And it is a steam vents. Ooh. My puppet wants to scry. No more land. I said no more land. To the bottom. Is a baby is a wooden baby. Another steam vents. We up against some kind of arc light phoenix? Think that our, we'd be pretty favored in a matchup of that nature. Right now, I'm playing a whole bunch of toughness and very little power, but that will change. Yes, yes please, yes. Gargoyle, your turn. You can tell the opponent's like, do I shock something? Oh my god, you did. That's kind of awesome. I will make this 1-1. One, one. All 
All right. So, Overseer, Loxodon. What you got? If you smell what the lox is cooking. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see a shock there. It makes sense. The opponent really snapped off the one on the puppet. So it would make a lot of sense for them to have a backup. And now what do you do? You got a wrath? You're gonna need one. This is gonna get crazy. Another cliffs. This is... Hmm. A control deck that is not handling the control side well. Here's Gideon. I'm gonna show you a little trick. Give my venerated Loxodon Vigilance. Smash with it. This can be disrupted if the opponent has a removal spell so that this doesn't work out, but I can kind of tell they're a bit they're a bit soft right now. You can just kind of tell by the way priority passes, by the way they've run out their two shocks and don't seem to have anything else. And yeah, uh, it's a lot of power and toughness. It's going to take more than a shock or two to get out of that. And here's Fires of Invention. Let's see. Let's see. What can you do? What can you do? Fay of Wishes. That's your last spell. <laughs> That's your last spell for this turn, my friend. You needed that Fires of Invention last turn. Don't know what went wrong there, but looks like a tap land at the wrong time kind of thing. Yeah, you did. Hey. Hi there. So much damage. Turn too slow on the Kaya's Wrath. You can get to six wins with this weirdo pile. We have to draw more creatures, but I think it's a keep based on all that glitters and the Loxodon. We do need to draw more artifacts and enchantments. But as it is, all that glitters Ginger Brute, who knows? Might just be able to run away with the game. All right, our opponent's been on mulligans. We've been fortunate on our trip back, but here's Once Upon a Time. Just just wait. Just wait till you draw. You'll at the very least be closer if you need a specific card. Ah, so tilting. So tilting. It's not just me. A lot of pros on their podcasts have lamented how bad people are at casting Once Upon a Time. But if our opponent's on mono green, we're just coming. We're just coming for them. Full on ginger brooding. Full on all that glitters ginger brutage. Oh no, they also play red. Well, size still matters. Okay. Here's another brute. But we're definitely putting all that glitters on the other one. Size matters. Go all the way over the top. Because our opponent could have a bone crusher giant here. And, oh my god, it's so much, it's so big, it's so big, you guys, jeez, oh, Pete's, and that's game. The largest, craziest gingerbread cookie you've ever seen, just savage gingerbread, holy god almighty. <laughs> what could go wrong? We might just never cast one of our Loxodons. Whatever. I keep bad hands. I I need to break up the monotony of this game. All we gotta do is top deck another creature. We top deck another creature, of which I only have about a bajillion in the deck. That's math. That is actual science right there. As long as I top deck another creature, then we're Loxodoning on three on the play, and then Loxodoning again, and Loxodoning again. And that is among the best things you can possibly do. So, I think the upside is there. We didn't draw the creature. God. Ah! No. All right, passage. Sure. You did it on my turn. You denied me so much information. You changed everything about my play. What we got? What we got? More black-blue. That is... Yeah. 
Have at it. I kept this hand just to torture you thought erasure players. This is a terrible matchup and this hand didn't work out, so I am I am forecasting death. Whoa, you must have a thief of sanity. You must have a thief of sanity then, right? Oh my god. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, give me the nice. I deserve it. The lands off the top. Can't draw the critter. Alright, come on, thief. Nope. What the hell? So, how do you completely ignore the Loxodons? I, I don't get it. They demand more respect. Let's get it going. This must be another reanimator deck, right? I mean, where do you see Fibblethib the Lost? Except reanimation station. Now, the opponent just basically said you can have all these elephants. If they don't have an answer to it, they deserve to lose this game. And it's Night Vale Predator. Sure. Whatever. Okay. So, I can do a pretty cool trick. This is a prime day for justice. Actually, I can't. I, I was going to say I can give this Vigilance, or I guess I can give it, um, yeah, I can't do it and also Tribunal, because I'd have to tap this to attack, so that's the way it goes. I could give it Vigilance and attack, but if the opponent blocks it, which I'm sure they plan to, it's a problem. Uh, yeah. Ah, well. I guess I should have offered the trade anyway to the Night Vale Predator. It's going to trade with something someday, but at least this gets the Predator attacking the Gideon. Yeah, I don't like my last turn at all. Should have just been another elephant. Cauldron's Gift. No creatures. Well... That's one reason that Fibblethib is a little awkward. It gets shuffled back in the deck if they try to remove it. Now you're going to take damage. All right, so plus, hit this up with Vigilance. These all attack. Let's see. If I attack with you and you, because we do want to get something out of it before the Predator kills it, then I still have... This is untapped. This is untapped. I guess I can attack with this or grow it. It's a choice I get to make. Grow it or attack with it. It can be unblockable. Yeah, let's grow it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, nah, damage. Damage, you guys. Damage is how games end. With damage. All right, let's do it. What do you got? What you got? Merfolk's Secret Keeper, mill yourself. There's an agent of treachery. And here comes the agent. Will it be good enough here? Our opponent can have three blockers by stealing the other Loxodon. They bin the whole team. What's it gonna take? Our opponent's at seven. We have a Ginger Brute. If they attack the Gideon, they don't attack the Gideon. Unreal. So, this is going to be a tricky one. I think, one thing I'm thinking for sure is indestructible here. That means it has to be chumped. Now, the opponent blocking with Agent of Treachery, they might be really happy to do that, to be honest. This can go unblockable and get the opponent to at least five. These are all indestructible, so they force blocks. So two things have to block, and I guess it would be this and this. So what if I tribunal this... If I Tribunal the Agent of Treachery, if I Tribunal the Agent of Treachery, then the opponent can't get it back with Reanimator. And that's huge, right? Because that's the chump they really wanted. So then we plus here, make this indestructible so that the trades aren't good. We make this blockable only by creatures with haste, just in case the opponent would be willing to go to one. And then we force trades. The opponent has to make some blocks now. And nothing lives. So Gideon is now uncontested again. We also have this sweet proliferation from the Bastion if we need it, but I doubt it. And the opponent goes to seven. 
All right, what do you steal? I mean, nothing can block. It's all tapped, so all we had to do is proliferate and attack. And that's it. We actually got to seven wins. From an from an O2 hole to a seven win event. The comeback got so real. Also, no Okos. An Oko free environment. I, I should be careful telling the 38,000 subs on my channel about this, but I just played a whole event and didn't play against a single Oko. So if you guys aren't trying out standard event for a little break from the ladder meta, you might want to think about it. Gems! Hacks! Vault! Wow, it must be my freaking birthday. So, uh, some of you might not know, because I always get questions about this in my comments when this happens, the vault is an invisible box, and whenever you get your fifth or higher copies of cards, they go into the vault. And when the vault, it adds a tiny percentage to the vault, like micro, like every fifth common or something is like the tiniest fraction of a percentage. They're nerds, paging the nerds, please. Uh, you can put the statistics of what how it actually works in chat if you want to. But basically, I just don't think about it most of the time. But this fills up over time. And when the vault percentage actually gets to 100% because you open too many duplicate cards, you get this little shiny box. And if you open it, you get a mythic wild card, two rares, and three uncommons. And that's the thing that happens. I hope you enjoyed this video with mono white artifact, all that glitters, beatdowns. It was a roller coaster ride of emotions from the deepest despairs to the highest of heights. And I appreciate you taking the ride with me. Next up on the color challenge, what's up? We got one more mono white standard color challenge and then some historic and some brawl. So what will the last standard deck be? I'll give you a quick preview. These are the ones I'm considering. This is a Safara deck. This is an Ajani Pride Mate deck. And this is the Lishi Tian, just regular straight up white aggro deck. Which will be the one to make the final spot in the mono white color challenge? You'll have to tune in tomorrow to find out. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.